I built a little tool to do a watermark effect. I'm going to use my own logo. I have a video logo that uh, works like that, but I took a still from the end of it. Now, with the watermark tool, you can use video, but you have to realize that the effect is going to stretch out or compress depending on the length of the clip. So, if you know the exact length of your clip, you can cut a section for just the video watermark so that you can have it animate and then go to another clip that has the still at the end. And you can figure out how much time you need for the video part of the animation by clicking on your clip and double clicking on the time panel and it'll tell you exactly how long it is. This is exactly five seconds. This clip here is seven seconds and 21 frames, etc. But I'm just going to show the features of this effect using the still. So I'm gonna add the watermark to the clip and I'm going to click on the drop zone. Then I'm going to click on the clip that I want to use. In this instance, it's just going to be the still. And then I'm going to hit apply clip. I'm going to scale this down a little bit and you'll see that there is still some of the background visible in this and you might want to keep it in there. Depending on the kind of video you have, you might want to have the a darker background supporting the, the look of the watermark, but I don't. So I'm going to come down here. There's a, a built-in Luma keyer, and I'm going to roll it off until the video on the back is clear. And all the tools you need to deal with the Luma key are in here. And if you have a logo on a white background, uh, you can hit the invert button and work with it from there. And I can show you that real quick in a, in a minute. So starting from the top, I don't recommend messing around with how the drop zone fits, but you can play with it. Uh, you can change the blend mode, to all the modes are in here. You can desaturate this. And run the opacity down like that. So you can do something very subtle like that. You can play with the value amount. You can scale. Right now I want to leave this up a little bit because I have other stuff to show you. You can position on the screen wherever you want this to go. And in conjunction with that, you can set a pivot point. I'm gonna click this little checkbox here and it's gonna show a pivot. So if you're using rotation, you can see that that's the point that these axes are going to rotate around. Set this and let's say I want the pivot point to be centered on the eye right there. And now, if I do an animation to spin this, it's going to spin around center there. Position is going to be in relationship to the pivot point. Now I'll scale this down and position it. You can do an emboss effect. And you can get pretty extreme with that. But you can get a nice glassy look with that. And then there's a drop shadow. But 
So you can get a lot of different kinds of effects out of this, just playing around with these controls. You can animate it. Oh, before you render this, make sure you hide the pivot location or you'll get a little crosshair in there. And I'm gonna reset this to blank. Try this one. This one has a white background. This one's gonna be a little bit challenging. You can see it already has transparencies in it, so that makes it a little difficult. However, go down here, we'll invert the keyer. These controls work a little backwards when you're inverted. You have levels controls here. That pumped it up pretty good. Embossing really helps out. So there it is. Uh, watermark effect. I recommend that you have motion and if you have a specific watermark you use all the time, just set it up in motion and save it as a favorite. If you don't know how to do that, I did a video a while back that had that particular tip. It's called Why Every Final Cut Pro 10 User Should Have Motion 5. And it goes through the steps of saving a favorite. So there you have it. Hope you find it useful and catch you on the next one.